Good evening, welcome to Season 2, Episode 12 of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast. Joining me this week, Greg Taylor from Brazil. Boa to the mundo. And Aaron Wolf from Boston, albeit he's not in Boston. Where are you, Aaron? I am in Islington. He's in Islington. He's in Gunaland. Guna, Guna land, even. <laughs> Right, um, just a quick mention before before we start talking about the game and various things. Um, I should me- just say a big thank you to Nikki, um, who on last Tuesday hosted the podcast in my absence. Um, we had an all-girls all podcast. As far as I'm aware, we're still the only Tottenham podcast or football podcast that has ever done an all-girl episode. Um, and if you've not listened to it, um, please give it a listen. Um Right, um, Aaron, you're here in the UK. We'll, we'll talk a little, little bit, a little bit more about that a bit later and about your visit here. First visit, first visit to the lane earlier this week. Um, before we do any of that, um, we played Arsenal today. We got a draw, which is which is a credible result and a result that I would have, before the game started, I would have happily taken. Um, yes, however. Um, it's really a game we should have won. And I felt that it was my quick take on it. I thought it was a really open game of football. I thought it was just a very entertaining game of football. End to end. Um, I thought that we were the better team. For first 20 minutes, I think it was fairly open. After that, I think we were in the ascendancy. As soon as we scored, I think we were just on top of them. And frankly, second half, you know, we were all over them. We should have got that second goal. We we didn't, and and it proved costly, and, and they got an equaliser. Um, I think that we were also lucky, maybe towards the end, they could have got another one. Um, they certainly were threatening us every time. Where we looked weak, I thought in that game, if we had any weaknesses in that game, and I think actually to a man, collectively and individually, we played really well. There were some really good performances there. Um, the fullbacks, um, Deli Ali was, I think, man of the match. He looked really good. Dembele, Lamella worked his socks off. Um, if there was one area that was slightly weak, I think it was our inability to handle balls in the box. We just seemed a little bit tentative, and Giroud um, looked very threatening. Um, and obviously they, they they scored from one delivery in the box, and um, they could have had another one possibly. Um, I think that if that had had they had another one gone in, I think that would have been very unfair. And and um, as it was. I think one all was well, even one all was probably unfair because I think we were the better, better team. But there you go. Um, anyone agree or disagree with that? I would agree with it. I mean, I would have taken a draw before the game as well. I was a bit, bit disappointed, but not terribly disappointed. It's just a shame because until when do they score? Some like seventy seventh minute or something, something like until that, yeah. then. Until I mean, at the beginning, at the very beginning, yeah, we were under the cosh a little bit, but they were the home team. You've got to expect that. But I think we came back really well. We certainly played as a unit, and especially in the second half, there was a lot of fluid passing. There was one one part when I I, I thought it was you know, was it going to be like the the forty eight pass against QPR that we had. Mm. Um, really pleased for Harry that he got his goal. Um, Shame that he didn't get another one, but uh, this, you know, this is football. He's, he's not a machine. Uh, Gibbs's goal was against the run of play. When he came on, I thought, well, okay, Gibbs has come on. He's not going to do anything, and he bloody well did. Um, yeah, everybody put a shift in. I think for me, I think I, for a special mention, I, I put down Walker and Dembele and Loris, of course, because he did keep us in it. But uh, Dembele, I'm, I'm so pleased. 
about Dembele because I've not been his greatest fan in the past and he seems to realise that he's quite a strong guy and that he can shrug people off. Yeah, for me, Dembele was the man of the match. I mean, he was he was strong, he was immense. Um, the, for me, I don't know, the game felt like two points dropped. We were dictating play, we were dominating possession, we were... It, it, <laughs> It just seemed like it was ours. Um, I would have taken yeah. one point before the match, but um, it feels a little bit like it could have been ours completely. Yeah, um, it, we, we, you know, we we were the better team. There's, there's no no doubt about that. Um, it's disappointing. The, the the flip side of it, I look. If I'm trying to draw positives, the performance was was really good and we're still unbeaten since the first day of the season in the league um, we're still nothing's changed in terms of our points behind up behind the, the behind the, the two teams at the, at the top um, City and Arsenal we're still five points behind them we City dropped points as well um, if you go back to previous seasons this could have been a game we could have just lost we were you know yeah. let's, let's not forget Going two nil up, not one nil, but two nil up at the Emirates in um, February 2012 under Harry, and then losing five two. Um, Spurs teams in the past would have got blown away. Let's face it, at the Emirates, um, we don't have a really good record there. Um, although interestingly, under Pochettino, we're still unbeaten there. Two two matches under Poch um, at the Emirates, both ending in one, one all draws. I and mean, actually, if you compare. This season to last season. Last season, I thought we did did really well in the one all draw, and we we we, would, we deserved that point. This season, okay, the, re- the result is the same, but we, we actually, you know, should have really come away with three points. And that's a measure of yeah. what Pochettino's doing. Um, Absolutely, I think I think dropping two points in this game is a positive thing. The fact that we were that far ahead of them, and that dominant in the game is is only positive um because ultimately from our from our um from from what we spend we should be the the lesser team but we're we were way ahead of them in this game we were there's something which um I'm going to paraphrase what 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 Gary Neville so on on commentary on Sky that I was watching Gary Neville used the phrase that about you know the, the the Spurs team. Well, he said a few things. One in the past, he's always said he's always referred to Spurs when he played for United as being an easy win and and Spurs having this sort of brittleness about them. Now he doesn't think that's true anymore of, of the Tottenham team under, under Pochettino. We're starting to have a bit of that mental strength that you know we're starting to we've got one or two players which are. Like Dembele, who are um, who are quite strong and 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 not and, and no pushovers by any means, and coupled with all of that, Pochettino has got rid of um, what well, we know he's got rid of the the Adebayors, the Kabuls, the Kapues, the the players that didn't fit into his way of thinking, and what he's got us doing is he's got players that are. Um, that, that he can trust and, and that are playing at a sort of very high energy pressing tempo. Um, and he's starting to build a team that that's and players that that are responsive and re- receptive, I should say, to his 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 philosophy. Um, you know, I contrast that with, with Arsenal and I think if I was Arsene Wenger I'd be quite disappointed, frankly. I'd be I'd be disappointed with the way that my players played. Very disappointed. I'd be quite worried and concerned. I know they had a few injuries. Um, I'd be quite relieved if I was in his shoes that I got something from the game. Um, and I contrast that with us. You know, we we look a team, and we look to have a squad that is starting to go places. We haven't gone anywhere. We we haven't won anything. I, I know, and there's a long way to go, but. We look to be building something for the future, and Arsenal have been talked about as title contenders, but not on the evidence of, of today. No way. I think I think what Poch has done, he's 
is kind of with, with the team. He's creating a sense of a community. They they all play for each other. You know, they they really do. There's a sense of belonging. They feel that they belong to a team. That they are. I mean, this is why they probably are playing like a unit today. I mean, they were really really good. We're not a we're not a we're not a team of individuals now. We're a team of people who look after each other. They look out for each other. If there looks like there's going to be a bit of a scrap, there's somebody dashing in to either stop it or, or add a bit of support if necessary. I think I, I, I really, I'm so pleased that we've got Pochettino. I think he's been the best thing for us. He's a breath of fresh air for a lot, best thing for a long, long time. Absolutely. Um... I, I took the uh, the tube. I was on the tube today. Look how British I am. And um, <laughs> I. I all the Gooner fans got on at uh, Finsbury Park, and I overheard so many people talking about how relieved they were. That that is that is spectacular to me. I mean, we were Pochettino has built a team that is so far superior to them that we could go to their house and they could feel relieved at securing the point and we could feel like we dropped to going yeah. there that is that is amazing i've never seen our team play that well off the ball play that dominantly against fucking Will- Woolwich. i mean it was a delight it was absolutely lovely to watch <laughs> it was it was um just on the um on, on, on some of the performances, we talked about um, uh, um, Dembele, Aaron, um, Greg, uh, Aaron, you said he was your man of the match. Um, and, I, and I've been critical, Greg, as well in the past of Dembele. But he's really starting to come come good this season. He's showing us that the, um, the player that we signed from Fulham, he's got the strength... Um, and he's he's he he's starting to assert himself on games, and um, he's not. You know, the frustrating thing I always found with with Dembele was he would hold on to the ball for too long and he wouldn't really release it. Now he's passing at the right times. He's starting to show, and as we saw on Thursday, he's not afraid to, to take a shot. Um, and he's he's got that in his armory. I just wish he would use it more often. Um, so he had a really good game. Um, Deli Ali was superb. Dyer was workmanlike. Um, Kane did well, so that's six in four, six goals in four games. Yeah, um, seven in total this season. Six of them in the Premier League um, for us. So that's notwithstanding the goals he scored for England as well. John Paul Millard on Facebook said that he has ten in twelve North London derbies. I don't know if that's true, but if that is, that is incredible. That doesn't sound correct. So uh, right. Kane, yeah. Well, well, he got he got one today, and he got two last season in the two-one win. So, yeah, but but London derbies includes Chelsea. Oh, in London derby, sorry, the Hammers and and the others. Yeah, because um, he got he got he got a brace against Chelsea. Yeah, um, yeah. And he's, I can't remember he got one against West Ham as well. Um, that's just sort of memory uh, we'll have to look, look that up but yeah that's that's plausible um walker yeah i thought he did really well yeah, and it... same here danny rose was incredible as far as i'm concerned he seemed to win every aerial battle and he's tiny and he keeps winning <laughs> headers it's amazing yeah he's Real athlete, really good going forward, and and it's good that um, I mean, you you were there on Thursday um, against Anderlecht. I thought Davis had a really good game in the middle of the week, but we've got that competition now between between yeah. the the two left backs. Um, just one thing, I, I made a note earlier in the game. This was bef- certainly early in the first half, and again in the second half. Toby Alderweireld, um, I thought he had a really good game again. Um, doesn't do a lot, but what he does, he does very well. Um, but do you think that both Toby and Jan and to some degree Larice should have done a bit better um, on the set pieces clearing the lines when, when, when the crosses came in I mean Larice for some reason seemed to stay on his line and didn't come out um, when the ball came into the box I don't know if he was just a, 
scared of not scared but sure showing respect to Giroud who's who's obviously an international colleague that he knows well but even um you um Tongan and and um Alderweireld I just felt they could have done a little bit more to clear the lines when when all those crosses were coming in I, Go on, I didn't see it that way to be honest yeah I I, I just from what I saw Every time the ball came in, I felt relaxed. I never, they never looked like scoring. Even in the most dangerous parts of the field, it just never seemed like they were going to score. And I, it, it could be that, you know, four pints and being at the, at the Bill Nick at, you know, in Tottenham, like that may have skewed my perception. That, but, that must have. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, how can you possibly feel relaxed watching an Arsenal Tottenham match? Giroud went very close with a few with a head with a couple of headers. Yeah, yeah, but I don't. I think those were great balls in. I don't think that there was any moment where I felt like, oh, we blew it mm. on defense. I mean, even their goal and the and right before that, when uh, Giroud put it put it a little bit wide, those were good balls in. They played well. They're a good team, and and we. You know, we we didn't clear it, but for the rest of the time, for the first half, every time they had the ball in our half, I was completely unmoved by it. You must have had your eyes shut then, Aaron. I mean, (laughs) Arsenal, Tottenham, Emma Donovan on, I think it was Emma Donovan on Facebook said that she was having trouble breathing, and I I just and I, I thought the same. Whenever when it's an Arsenal, Tottenham match. From the, from the word go, I have a knot in my stomach. Not because I'm scared of them. It's just that it's, it's the Gooner. It's the Gooners. It's, the, it's our North London, <laughs> North and South London derby. I don't get that with Chelsea. And Chelsea, except for this season, Chelsea are better. I don't get it with Man City. But with Arsenal, it's, it's just I think that, that we're, we're kind of um, psyched up that we want to win it so much that it... It physically affects our constitution, you know. <laughs> there was a guy at the pub, at the Bill Nick, who kept saying to me, I'm not enjoying this. I'm not enjoying this. And I think that is true. I was not enjoying it, but that's not, not the same to. as being afraid. For me, watching Toby and Yan two, two games in a row live at the lane, I just felt like there was nothing that was going to come near them that they weren't going to clear away. When they scored, it was disappointing. And it was um, a surprise to me, as opposed to feeling like there was some sort of inevitability at work here. Our defense is so much better. Off the ball, we are so much better than I've ever seen us play that, that we should feel disappointed when they draw even, as opposed to feeling like there was a, this was inevitable. But, but in a sense, that's a measure of how far we've come this season. Yeah. That 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 you know, yes, we we would have. I mean, I, I said it to you earlier in the week um, at the bricklayers. I said I, I I will I'd quite happily take a draw. Okay, mm-hmm. knowing what that means, knowing that that when you say statements like that, you open yourself up afterwards to uh, you know exactly a situation like today where you end up drawing a match that you should have won. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still, you know, that did cross my mind when I asked those words on Monday, um, and then again to you on Thursday, and and but 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 I would have quite happily taken that. Yet it's a measure of how far we've come as a club that we're we're disappointed that yep. we didn't get three, the three points, um, you know. But we've played so well; um, it's not a flash in the pan, you know. It's not. It's one of those games. It's North London derby. We've we've been playing well consistently for large parts of this season. Yeah, sure, there've been the odd game, Stoke City at home, which was disappointing. Um, I'm not I'm not as disappointed at the Leicester result as many are. I'm obviously disappointed in the manner in which we we, we dropped um, dropped the points or, or conceded a goal straight away after scoring one. But actually, I thought overall I thought that result was fair. So Leicester gave us a uh, run for money and played very well in that game, but overall this season, even if you include the opening day defeats, we've been pretty solid in the Premier League, and we've just got better and better. Um, and that's a testament to Poch- Pochettino and to the players. Um, 
we, we, we lost we lost one game by a fluke by a total total fluke hmm. that, that is incredible as far as I'm concerned and, and also if you, if you coupled with the fact that as you said earlier about look at the amount of money Arsenal spent look at the amount of money we've spent we haven't spent lots of money sure we did no. we did two years ago um, when we had the bail money and Baldini signed well uh, we as a club signed all of those players now most of those players um, or three of them aren't there anymore um, is it three or four how, how many's left so we've got Ericsson Chadley Lamella that's it I think Ericsson Chadley Lamella and Capoue Paulinho Vlad and Soldado okay yep yep right you are okay so those, those three are the, the only one left over we haven't really splashed out Toby Alderweireld's for me, was a big signing. Although I suppose Son, well, in monetary terms, Son Son was was quite a lot. But we haven't spent a lot of money relative to other clubs. We haven't gone and bought the top draw, the marquee signings that that, that other clubs have signed. Um, we've only really got one recognised centre forward who has played God knows how much football last season with us and then with England and the under 21s and he was carrying a knock at the end of the season but despite all of that we're still where we are and that's that is really some achievement um, and I know that some of our fans tend to moan and whinge and are always sort of glass um, half empty half full rather than half full type um, people but we've done really well um, and and I said it before it's an upward up tra- trajectory and I can only s- see us improving further still yeah I mean yeah. the, the, the only way is up I, I, I don't know where I read it I saw an article earlier on and it was kind of comp- saying that Wenger in 2012 this was his plan to use to use the, the, the youth and to introduce them in into the team and not spend so much money and they reckon that he must be spitting feathers now because he hasn't actually done that Pochettino and Tottenham have done that and we're reaping the benefits now but we've also got an identity I don't want to be sort of jingoistic about this um, and I may come across but we've got lots of homegrown players Um, we've got lots of English players we've got Ben Flab who right he's Algerian but as far as I'm concerned he's he's come through the system at Tottenham yes we've got some players in in Dyer and Rose for instance and Deli Ali that didn't come through the uh, Rose was a product of the Leeds Academy um, uh, Dyer Sporting Lisbon and 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 um, Deli Ali we signed from MK Dons but these are all young English players yeah. Um, and I look at that team, and I look at you know you've got Harry Kane, um, and then Mason as well. We've got an identity, and I look at Arsenal, and actually you could you could, you could label this at other teams as well. I look at Arsenal, you can even look at United, and how many homegrown players have they got? Do they actually have an identity anymore? You know, United under Ferguson, they had, and it might not ever happen again, but they had the the class of 92, they had the Nevilles yeah. and Skulls and Butts and, and Beckham and Giggs and all of that. Um, and they had an identity. And I look at them now, what, what Van Hal's doing, and just signing all these big money players and then selling them on, as he did with um, Di Maria, for example, and Falcao, um, and then bringing some more big money players. We, we look like we've got an identity. I think that's really, really important. I agree. I mean, Chelsea are possibly one of the worst offenders. I mean, how many young, how many homegrown players do they bring through? I think they've got about 31 players out on loan in various teams. You're almost certainly never going to see them near the first team. Well, City, I'm pretty sure that City have invested... Well, they have invested, I know they have. They have invested a lot in, in, in their academy and, yeah. and so forth. But that hasn't bared any fruits yet, and... A lot of their, a lot of the players in, in their team are um, are purchases, and, and and for that matter, aren't um, aren't English. Um, now I've got 
both of you on the pod, and if anyone's listened to previous episodes, it's fair to say that you're both fans, <laughs> members of the Eric Lamella Appreciation Society. Um, Signed up and with a certificate too. <laughs> yep. So he, he played. He played really well against. Uh, I thought had a good game. Um, he was. I don't know what he was taking, but he was very committed in 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 chasing people and closing them down and and tackling so much so that he he got a yellow card, um, which unfortunately will put him out of the West Ham game. There was a moment after that where I thought he would get he would pick up another one and get sent off, and I'm yeah. glad that I'm glad that Pochettino made the substitution when he did. Um, just thoughts quickly on Lamella, and also looking ahead to that West Ham game. Are we going to miss him? Can we cope without him? I, I think um, I think we're going to miss him. He, I, I was just looking at some stats online. He had eight tackles. The only person that had more tackles on the pitch was Coquelin, and he had nine. And that was... I mean, you don't think of Lamella that way, but that is what he brings to this team. He's constantly, constantly pressing the ball and turning possession over back to us, getting the ball back and, 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 and creating for the creators. And it's strange to think of it because because of his price tag, he sh- should be one of these flair players that are the guys that are setting up, you know, Kane and stuff. But I, you have to look at Lamella. Oh, did I lose you guys? Javid? We've, bri- we've briefly lost you, Aaron. Uh, yeah, you're back now. Oh, I was on such a roll. Where did you lose me? Um, <laughs> I think at the word should, and then you sort of um, w- yeah, and the word should. About his, you were talking about his, his price tag and oh, okay. should something rather. When you look at his price tag, you think he should be one of these flair players, one of these creative types. But actually, the lamella that he's become, or the player that he's become, is a guy that is creating for the creators. He's playing advanced positions in the, on the pitch, but he is setting up Erickson. He's setting up Ali. He's setting up players that are going to set up Kane and the fact that he has almost eight times as many tackles as anyone else on our team is a testament to how hard he works for this club. Mm. Greg? Well, well, I mean, I I think he he still is a very creative player. I mean, I I made a note that in the fourth minute, there was a great pass from him to Kane, which cut through the the Arsenal defence. But unfortunately... It caught the defence by surprise. And it caught Harry by surprise as well. I don't think if he was expecting it because Lamella can thread a pass, and sometimes, sometimes it, it it doesn't pay off because the recipient just just doesn't notice at the time. I mean, Harry Harry is very good. He notices most of the passes coming to the, this one, but this one, it, it it just totally passed him by. Um, I think he's become a much more rounded player as well. And especially with this North London derby, he he understands derbies. I mean, he's played in in um, River Plate and uh, is it Boca Boca Juniors? He's played in those derbies in Argentina, and they're very aggressive, very tough um, matches, including the crowd as well. So he understands what a derby means, and I think the aggression he put in today was was an example of that. He. He didn't hold back or anything. He knew it was a derby. He was going to give his all, even if it meant getting the yellow card. Unfortunately, the yellow card will keep him out of West Ham, but he comes back for Chelsea. Is it Chelsea afterwards? Yep, Chelsea afterwards, yeah. And actually, before that, Carabag away. And when he came off the pitch, our team changed. I mean, we we suddenly lost the midfield battle, and we were under under the pressure. In a way that we hadn't been until he came off the off the pitch. Yeah, it it was a substitution that I was expecting. I'm I'm well, mm-hmm. I made a few notes during the match, and, and when he got his yellow, um, I thought maybe he might come off at sixty minutes or something for Son, but um, he actually stayed on a bit longer than that. Yeah. So this is seconds. Sorry, this is Son's second appearance as a substitute in two games. What did you guys think of him? Um, I don't think he was on the pitch enough to make an impact. 
Yeah, I'd agree. Um, unless you can tell me otherwise, um, <laughs> I, I don't think I I yeah. didn't see anything good or bad. I, uh, for me, the important thing was for him to get some match time. Um, I. I, th- I think that if Lamella hadn't got the yellow, then Sun might have come on later, just to give him a, a little yeah. bit of little bit of match practice. Yeah. Because he's coming back from the from the injury. But I think the fact that Lamella had got the yellow brought forward the timing a bit. Yeah, for me, he just didn't do very much. I mean, I guess I think you guys are probably right that this was it was a little bit rushed because of the yellow card, but. Mm. With Anderlecht and, and this game, he, he didn't impact the way he had before his injury, and that's probably a match fitness thing. Yeah. Just on Lamella, I think that it's a lot of, not everything, but some of it is de- almost definitely down to Pochettino and the manager. Um, Pochettino, as we established, is a good coach, and he's, he can get the he can get the best out of players, particularly young players, and players that are willing to listen and learn and that don't have chips on their shoulders or big egos. Um, he's also Argentinian. I don't know the degree to which that's going to impact, but I'm sure that it would help. And then if you Language-wise, contra- definitely. Language-wise, yeah. But also if yeah. you contra- contrast the fact that he's got Pochettino as a coach or manager to the previous two. So AVB, well... He barely had any time with AVB. Then he gets injured and has a long back injury and obviously takes time to come back. And he's in a new country, yeah. le- learning language and so forth. And then he's got Sherwood in, who uh, the less said about him, the better. Um, and with Poch, he's got somebody who understands him and hopefully is starting to get, get the best out of him. They're still, look, I'm, not, I'm still not a, a fully fledged or, or a member at all of, of, of the Appreciation Society that, that you two belong to. Um, I think that he's done very well. I think there's still a lot that he needs to improve on, but um, it's good. I, I think you're looking through the door, though, aren't you? You're looking through the keyhole and thinking, oh, it's not so bad in there. Yeah, I, th- I think... <laughs> we, we, we said it before, end of last season, that this season would be would, would be would be key and I, I don't know, the first few matches of this season I, I wasn't impressed with him and I just thought god he, he's got to go he's got to go but to be fair he's he's done he's done really well in the last I don't know uh, probably since September I think I wasn't impressed the first first our first few matches in in August um, but I think definitely since September uh, till now um, the last couple of months he, he's, been, he's, he's been performing really well um in the second half of the podcast, we'll um, we'll look at the West Ham game, get some quick predictions. Um, I'll, I'll briefly look at the Spurs ladies, and we'll do some questions. Um, before we do that, Aaron, so you you arrived in the UK last Monday, and you've been here for a week almost. Um, first, 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 first visit to the UK and first visit to the lane on Monday, Monday night. Um, yeah, it's Aston Villa. Um, you were with me at the game, and then you were there once again on Thursday to watch um, watch us on a European night. Now, I know that you've written an article, um, Wolf on Spurs, article number five, known unknowns, um, talking about your experience that very first time on, on, on last Monday and if anybody um, hasn't read the article then I suggest they go to the Tottenham Hotspur family podcast.com um, website um, and they can read the article um, and I suggest they do that it's a fascinating read um, without obviously going into a great deal of depth so people can read the article um, could you perhaps in a few words summarise the last week if that's possible and particularly your visit well, well it, it's interesting because you've had three experiences of, of Spurs so you've watched the first one on Monday against Aston Villa night match um, and that must have been um, an out of body experience and then you've probably calmed down and you watched another game at the lane on Thursday European night and then today obviously you, you weren't as I we weren't able to get tickets for, for the Emirates but you watched game on TV in a pub um, no Bill, Bill Nick Bill Nick no less in Tottenham um, so yeah 
briefly tell us about the, the last <laughs> seven days? Well, it's actually four trips to the lane in one week because I, That's right. I, yeah. I went back and did the, the stadium tour on, uh, on, on Saturday. Or on Saturday, rather. Um, the, the long and the short of it is, and I wrote this in the article, the, the main takeaway was that I knew nothing about Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. The, 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 the game is played so fast and it's so untranslatable on TV. And I've seen live football in the States. I've seen Tottenham in the States play against, um, you know, in friendlies against the Red Bull, New York Red Bull and stuff like that. There's just no comparison. So Thursday, I just, my head was spinning. Um, by the time, I mean, sorry, on Monday my head was spinning. By Thursday, I, I sort of calmed down enough to, to be able to watch the game with some sort of measure of intelligence. Um, and then, of course, I went to the Bill Nick where everybody's singing and screaming and there's beer flying through the air and um, it's sort of hard to tell what the hell is going on. But all I can say is that for the international listeners who haven't made it over... If it is at all possible, if you can do anything in your power to get over here, do it. And for the, for the, for the, the people that are here and haven't been to the lane in a while, you don't know what you're missing. The, the sheer energy and passion and excitement of seeing the team play live and then even seeing the team play on TV at the Bill Nick, it it was just it was transformative. I, I can't say enough about this past week. On um on on Friday, um, you and I nothing related, nothing to do with football. We visited the Tower of London, um, and uh, I've not been in about I don't know twenty five years or something like that. I was a kid the last time I went, and um. We went to um, there was a section which had all this sort of uh, I don't know like armory and military um, <laughs> stuff. I'm trying to find the right technical term. And uh, there was a sign which said the Arsenal. Um, yeah. And then oh. that prompted Aaron. And yeah, we both sort of sh- rubbed our shoulders. Um, although they also had the Spurs in the they had Spurs in. Um, That's right. Uh, in the Tower of London, um, which is like sort of quite found amusing. Um, but um, that prompted Aaron to tell me a little anecdote about um, a place called Arsenal in Boston. That's right. Or a road. But where, where I live, uh, outside of Boston, in a town called Belmont, the the main way to get into the city of Boston is to go through a town called Watertown. And in Watertown is a place called the Arsenal. And the main street is called the Arsenal. And and no matter what I do, I can't tell my GPS, I can't tell Waze or Google Maps not to take me via the Arsenal. And so I like find myself in my car driving to an appointment or driving to pick up my wife or to my or my child or, or someplace important and it's like turn left on the arsenal and i i can't bear my i can't bear to do it and it's the strangest it's the strangest sensation because even the sign for for the arsenal the watertown arsenal it's it's got this cannon on it and i feel oh. like I feel like it's wrong. Like at the, the, at the depth of my heart, I feel like it's wrong to turn left. And so you should just take that into mind when you picture me on the train back from the Bill Nick, surrounded by people in Arsenal's <laughs> kit. I was so miserable. Just like I have to get, and I had to be. So I was, I was the worst. I mean, I, I was like, this is this is my living hell, surrounded by Arsenal supporters. I have to pee. I'm on the tube, and there's no getting off. It was it was a nightmare. So when you're in Boston, essentially you avoid going up the Arsenal. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, uh, I was given a recommendation from where, where I'm staying. About 20 minutes north of where I'm staying is is a Tottenham pub called uh, the Hope and Anchor, and I was told that there would be as many. Woolwich fans as there would be Spurs fans and I thought you know 
I didn't fly across the ocean to be in a place where there are as many Woolwich fans as there are Spurs. And so at the last minute, I got on the tube and I headed up to the Bill Nick, and I'm so glad that I did. So you're, you're flying back tomorrow? Yeah. Right, so your um, mission, should you choose to accept it, which you will, is you're, you're in, unfortunately, you are in um, Guna Land. Um, mm-hmm. So you should go around, desecrate as much of Guna Land as possible, <laughs> cause as much damage as possible, and then get on, get on that plane as quickly as possible sure, um, tomorrow. Sure. <laughs> um, no, on a, on a serious note, just the final thing on on, to, on, on Arsenal. We, we had a um, had a message from Andy Scoggins, who, who's appeared on the podcast a few times before. Andy's from the states, and he said, "What what did the panel make of the claim that Spurs supporters trashed the toilets in the away 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 end, breaking sinks and such?" And I should, our, um, Andy sent me a photo of this. Um, and I should say that this isn't being substantiated in, in, in any way, and we don't know if it is true. Um, and frankly, if it is true, um, unfortunately, that shit just goes on. They, the Arsenal fans, vandalised our stadium earlier this season. It was pretty. Um, it made me sick just because it was happening in front of my own eyes. I was powerless to do anything about it. Um, but we've done that before. Um, to their stadium, um, that sort of thing happens, you know. Um, that's that's what insurance is for. Yeah. Anyway, I, think I, I couldn't. I honestly couldn't care less. <laughs> and I think <laughs> before I had been here, I might have cared a little bit. I might have thought, "Oh, we should behave better." But being here, I couldn't care <laughs> less. Can I just congratulate you there, Aaron? Because being an American, you didn't say I could care less. You said it correctly. I'm so pleased to hear that. <laughs> well, I am a connoisseur of the English language or yes, the American true. language, as, as it is. Right. OK. Um, second half of the podcast, um, we'll do some questions, some quick questions and look at Spurs ladies and, and, and look to our next game against West Ham. Talking of which, here's Elliot Line with this week's forward line. Forward line on the Tottenham Hotspur family podcast with me, Elliot Line, looking forward to the Premier League fixture against West Ham on November the 22nd. This fixture last season ended 2-2. We had been 2-0 down with 10 minutes to play when Rose and Kane scored to level the game. West Ham have shown in recent seasons that on their day they are a match for anyone. Indeed, we have only won one of our five most recent meetings. Despite this, I see us as having a good chance of a win. I think we have a great 75% chance of scoring, a 37% chance of scoring more than once, and a cool 55% chance of keeping a clean sheet. The most likely scorelines are a 1-0 win, a 2-0 win, a 1-1 draw, and a 0-0 draw. Overall, I think there is a 55% chance of a Spurs win, a 26% chance of a draw, and a 19% chance of a West Ham win. This has been the forward line with Elliot Lyon. Come on, you Spurs. Right, welcome back to the second half of the Tottenham Hotspur family podcast. Thank you, Elliot, as ever. So, turning to that game against West Ham, we, we know that we're lamella um, uh Quick predictions, Greg. Um, I think... Ooh, I think... I don't think they're going to be too much of a problem with us. They're they're going to lose form, and we're going to be, going to be the team to do it for them. I think I think we're going to win three 0 Aaron, um, I think um, I agree with Greg. I think that uh, they drew with with Everton, but I think that um, I think they're not going to be able to sustain this. I I think we'll leak one. I think it'll be three one. Okay, I'm going to be slightly conservative and say that we're going to draw one all with them, but we're going to beat Chelsea in the next match. <laughs> um, and... Is Chelsea even still in the Premier League? <laughs> They're ten points behind us. Yeah. Um, and it would be it would be fitting if if we beat them, and that was Mourinho's last game. Um, although I don't know if it would, because then we, we'd never hear we wouldn't hear about how wonderful the Spurs' performance it would be. We'd all just hear about Mourinho this, Mourinho that. Right. Blah, blah, blah. I just can't wait to hear hear them saying you're going down with the villa. That's all. <laughs> That's all I want to hear. <laughs> right. Uh, before we do questions, so um, 
Bex normally provides an update on the Spurs ladies, but um, she's a bit busy today, so um, I'm going to provide a quick update. So we played um, QPR earlier earlier today. Our, the Spurs ladies played them at Uxbridge, and we won one nil, um, courtesy of a goal from Bianca Baptiste. Um, the other bit of news is that um, we've got two new signings for the Spurs lady. So towards the end of last week, um, we signed um, Kelly Blanchflower. I haven't made that up. Blanchflower, so famous Spurs yeah. name. The Kelly Probably Blanchflower that. signed from West Ham. Um, we signed her from West Ham. And we also signed Welsh international Megan Wayne um, from Watford. So the two new additions. Team. And one of them... Um, I think they're both attacking players, actually. Um, well, Megan's a Welsh international forward. Um, I'm not too sure about Kelly Blanchflower. But um, when Bex does her next update um, in a few weeks' time on the next pod, she can research and find out. There's a challenge for you, Bex. Right, um, let's finish off with some questions. Um, so we've had a question from Twitter, at Bryce35, Bryce Edie, Bryce Edie, Weedy Bryce asks, would you sell Townsend in January? If so, who is an ideal replacement from within Spurs? Or or, or, or transferring somebody in? Yes, and Alex Pritchard. Okay. Okay, I would say I wouldn't look to sell him because he is a useful impact sub, but if offers came in, I would listen to them. Mm. Um... Plus, I mean, the the rumour mill is saying that he's looking to go anyway. Um, who would replace him? I, I think Ninja. Clinton NG, Ninja. He can play on the left, in the middle, on the right. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd go along with that. Um, I, I think he's... I think he's a better player than sometimes some of the fans give him credit for I think he's a good impact um, sub um, obviously he's been a bit of a naughty boy and Pochettino <laughs> has disciplined him um, and that's good that he's done that that, that Poch has done that that's the right course of action um, if, a, if a really good offer came in for him in January then yeah we sh- I think we should we should move him, move, move him on I would be surprised I think he'll stay to the end of the season but I think he because he needs to play regular football to, to get into the England squad um, for the Euros in the summer, I think he's probably seeking, he'll probably seek a move away in January. Yeah. But um, I could see him going out on loan. Yeah, I could possible. see that. I mean, for me, I think there's no one except for him on on the squad that I feel like I don't know where he stands in relation to Poch and whether or not he's comfortable with what what the project is and after all of the shenanigans um that caused the 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 selling of paulinho and 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 capui and stuff i just think forget it what's the point there's there's plenty of talent in the in the squad and there's no reason to add any kind of poisonous atmosphere great um Lynette Keeler asks, why are we switching off about 70 minutes into a game? Um, we're winning. Uh, I'll argue to, today. Well, I don't think we switched off, but we allowed them back in, whatever it was, 75th minute. It's not a, it's not a, yeah, it's not a fit, fitness thing. They all look the same at 90 minutes as they did at, 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 at 10. Is it just complacency, and how can we fix it? I don't think we're switching off per se. I think what's happening is that the opposition team realises that the clock's ticking and it starts to, and it kind of kicks on a bit, tries to make a special effort to get something out of the game. The thing is that we need to change up a gear as well when they do. Mm. And that's probably why it might look like we're switching off. I don't think we're switching off at all. I don't think we also kill teams early, early on in the match when we shift. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we, we make... We we had this Aaron on, on on Monday against Villa. We, you know, we, in the end, look, it look, looks we, like there was only one team that was going to win the match. But at two one, when they when they pulled one back and it was two one, 
even though they were pretty poor, it did look a little bit scary. I was sort of thinking, you know, Shades of Stoke, for instance. Um, we In the end, we got the third and, and that was that. But we do sometimes have a tendency to make it more difficult than it should be. I agree completely. And the 70th minute is just after Poch has made a, a, a substitution generally. He tends to make substitutions right around the 60th, 65th. And I think, I think it's much more down to us not killing off the game earlier than it is to us switching, switching off and that, or, sorry, I think it's more about us not killing off the game and less about us switching off. I think they take advantage of, um, a late substitution and they just, it's, it just happens. But the, the bigger concern is not scoring, uh, a couple of times before the, the half when we, when we've had the opportunity. Mm. Today yeah. being today being a case in point when yeah. I think at one nil we should have we should have got that second goal mm-hmm. put a little bit of clear blue water between us and them. Um, Matt Edrich asks, do you think Musa has come good, or is it more that we finally have worked out how to use him properly and is he the new beast? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about the new beast. I don't, I don't like these sorts of. You know, Sandro was supposed to be the beast, or, or was labelled the yeah. beast. And I don't, I don't like to make comparisons, and I don't necessarily like this. He's been beastman, beast. If that, that is that such a word, he's been beast-like, be, beast-like, or beastman-like in his performances. He's been a real beast. Beastly. I'm not going to call, yeah, okay. beastly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very strong, very assertive. Um, and yeah, he he does look like he's he's coming good, and. Have we finally worked out how to use him properly? Um, well, if there's anybody that can get the best out of a player, I think it's, po- it's Pochettino. I think he's, he's a good coach. And, yeah, it d- didn't help that we had... We went from AVB to Sherwood and, and we had all that instability beforehand. And now at least we've got some level of stability and a, and a good coach. I think it's I've down done. to... Go on. I think it's down to Deli Ali and Eric Dyer. And I think the three of them, Musa Dembele, Deli Ali, and Eric Dyer, make up this triangle that is outstanding. And it allows Musa Dembele to drop back and play uh, a kind of almost the role of, def- of defensive midfielder while Deli Ali is attacking. And when, when Deli Ali is dropping back, Musa Dembele can attack. He's very strong. He's very dangerous, and in the past we sort of had him play one of two of those positions, either sitting back or attacking, and now he's playing much more in that sort of box-to-box role, um, and it's either Luck or it's or it's Pochettino, who knows, but I think absolutely he's come good. I think he's he's become one of the more exciting players on the team right now. I think he's had a surge of self-confidence. And now he realizes that he can do what we think he can do. Um, also, I made a note that maybe he's been watching the Rugby World Cup and has picked up a few tips because <laughs> that last game, when he, he was just shrugging off the, the, the defender to score that goal, I don't know that he would have done that last season at all or even earlier this season. But now he knows he's a he, he's big and strong guy. He can, he can shrug people off. And now he knows he can do it and he's doing it. Was that the Villa game? Yeah, the Villa game. He was just yeah. He, he could have gone down for a penalty, and and he didn't. And it was absolutely wonderful to watch mm. with his finish. Okay, moving along. Carol Hayward asks: Poch seems to have his starting eleven now. Um, players like Wimmer, Trippier, will they soon get pissed off with no gameplay? I think Trippier would be okay. I mean. Otherwise, he'd still be with Burnley, wouldn't he? I mean, he's better mm. off with us than he was at when he was at Burnley. There weren't hunt, well, not hundreds, but there weren't loads of teams trying to get hold of him. Um, Vimmer, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what his situation was in the, in the Bundesliga. Was it the Bundesliga he was in? Um, maybe he needs some some cup starts, FA Cup and Europa League, yeah. to keep him happy. Well, Trippier, to be fair, you know, he started, I think, pretty much all of our Europa games, mm-hmm. um, yeah. and he played in the League Cup defeat um, 
as well earlier this season. Uh, so he, he's he's getting a chance, and, and I see comparisons between Ben Davis last season and him this. You know, he's, he's slowly finding his feet, um, or will be allowed to find his feet. And when there's a bit more of a concern, because I he played a, he played in the League Cup defeat, and I thought he played really well in that game. He looked really comfortable on the ball. Um, and I think he played against Carabag as well, but he hasn't featured since um, in the European matches. Um, Poch seems to favour playing both Toby and um, Vertonghen in the European games. So I would prefer if he played one and rested the other and played Wimmer. Um, so it looks like Wimmer will either have to wait until the FA Cup, which is January, or or an injury to one of the um, to either uh, Vertonghen or, or Alderweireld. Wimmer is also young. He's only 22. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, his time will come. And I, I think I wouldn't be surprised to see him start against Karabag. Um, but, yeah, I think, I, think, I think Trippier hasn't, personally, hasn't done enough to warrant mm. a start in, in 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 the Premier League, so and he must know that. So I think I think he will continue to get his starts in the Europa League and in the Cups probably, and I can't imagine him getting um, upset. Okay, so we've got a question um, from David Pitts on your favourite subject, Lamella. <laughs> will the haters be back if Eric has one more bad game, um, Dave? Continues to say, in my opinion, in my opinion, this is his season to go on and shine. Well, the haters are always going to hate, let's face yeah. it, whoever it is. Okay, you know they're always going to have a bee, be in their bonnet about somebody, and they're always going to complain. And it doesn't matter who it is. That's just you know, um, everybody else will take a bit more of a rational view. I'd like to think and. Um, and they'll they'll assess it over the course of a season or a few matches. And to be fair, you know, he's, he has, like I said earlier, I think he's he's been doing doing well the last couple of months. He's cemented his place in the team. I think I yeah. think people. Go on. No, no, you go, go ahead. Okay, I think people who didn't see what Aaron and I were seeing before are now starting to notice what we were talking about, that he's he's got this vision, that he's tenacious. If he loses the ball, he'll go straight back and try and get it. He's not just going to let people get away with it. I mean, Aaron and I are kind of like the founder members. There are a couple of others in the, the Facebook group as well. But I, th- I think, hopefully, I think most most people are like yourself. They're reasonable enough that they're, gonna, they're looking at him and they're thinking, well, actually, yeah, he is a pretty good player now. So I don't, I think if he, have a, if he has a bad day at the office, they're not going to suddenly turn and and lambaste him again. But as you said, haters are going to hate. There's going to be people who hate him. I mean, I wasn't a great fan of fan of Dembele, and I've turned around, you know. He's he's going great, and if he has a bad day at the office, I won't go, oh, he's terrible again. I'll just think he had a bad day at the office. The, the interesting thing to me, I think, first of all, I think, yes, I think people will hate. And I, I think if he has a bad game, people will start screaming about Lamella does nothing with the ball and... Blah, blah, blah. What's interesting to me is that Lamella, Walker, Rose, the three of them seem to get the most abuse out of anyone on the team. Yeah. Dembele here and there. But the three, those three players are, are um, recipients of the majority of our abuse. And I think the three of them are three of our most dynamic players. So there's a sort of high-risk-reward situation going on and i prefer all three of them to be consistently on the firing squad consistently risking and making mistakes for high reward than to sort of play conservatively and and yeah. disappear and fade away it'll be telling um how much we miss how much if at all we miss them against west ham mm-hmm. um i hope i hope we don't um because, um, you know, I, I want us to, to win the match and, 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 and do well. Um, but if if we struggle in some way, um, I wonder um, how much of that will be down to the fact that 
but he's not there. We, we shall we shall find out in a few weeks. Um, when is Chadley back? I think it was he was going to be out for six weeks, um, and he got injured against was it Swansea or Liverpool? Liverpool, I think. So that was about three weeks ago. So he may be, I guess, back by the Chelsea game. Maybe more realistically, December. We're looking at. Well, I'm I'm, I'm glad that that Lamella got his yellow card today, and will be kept out of West Ham rather than being kept out of Chelsea. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or indeed, as I think as it was we talked about earlier, off air, um, or or even got sent off today. That would have been awful. Uh, yeah. But it's a testament also to how strong and, and, and tenacious our squad is that we've had two players go off because of yellow card accumulation this early. Dyer and Lamella, two two players that have just been absolutely battling in the midfield. And that's, mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I think that's a great thing. There's, yeah, there's a real resilience and fight mm-hmm. about, about, about Tottenham, you know, as, as a... I said earlier, Gary Neville in the past, and I think rightly so, justifiably so, said when he played against Tottenham as a player, there was always a sort of soft underbelly about them. Um, And now we seem to have addressed that. Um, And and we look resilient and and difficult to beat. Okay, um, so one of the people that we keep singing his praise for... um, in, in, that, in that respect and, and in terms of player development is, is El Poch um, so we've had a, a question from at 80 underscore Spurs at all Soma who asks is Pochettino the best coach we've had in the Premier League era that is a really hard question it's really hard to sort of define well, how, what are the parameters for 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 best yeah well, um, arguably, you would say yes, in so far as... Well, firstly, okay, you've got coach and you've got a manager. Yes, okay? yes right. that's so, what I was going at. In, that, in the Premier League era, so post-1992, um, I know he divides opinion, but Harry Redknapp got us fourth. That was the highest finish in that era. Um, qualified for the Champions League. We did, we did quite well in the Champions League. Particularly in you know in a debut season, getting to the quarterfinals, um, no mean feats. We finished fifth again under him, and then we finished fourth. And really, that was in any other season that would have been enough for the Champions League. So that that in terms of football achievement outweighs anybody else before or since. <coughs> But Harry wasn't a good coach. He might might have been somebody who could motivate players, but um, or put an arm around somebody. But he's not a he's not he's not a tactician. He's he's not somebody that understands the game. AVB possibly is a good coach, but I think he he suffered from being very stubborn and uh, a little bit single minded. I think Pochettino. Pochettino, I think is the best coach we've had. And if he continues um, making progress, then we will easily he will easily equal Harry Redknapp in terms of league um, standings. Uh, I'm sure he'll go from fifth to fourth, and 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 hopefully better still. So yeah, I'm going to go go along with that. I'll tell you what. Uh, almost 57 years ago, a little bit more than 57 years ago, Bill Nick made his debut as manager against Everton, and we won 10-4. And at the tour of the lane, I was told by the tour guide that after the game, Bill took his team aside and was furious because we let in four goals. Now, whether or not that's a true story or that's or that's reality, can't you see Pochettino saying the same thing? That's that to me says it all about Pochettino is that he's in the same mold where we we should not be conceding goals we should be scoring freely and he's going to push us in that direction and and there's no one literally no one that I've seen coach us or manage us that I would rather have than him right now yeah I I totally agree with you actually I'm I mean I put down that he's not the most successful yet. But I think he is probably the best. I mean, he's got a good grip on team dynamics. He's liked and respected by the players and the fans, most of them now. He's classy. Um, the team buy into his ethos and his system, etc. 
they're not going to, like this little spat with Townsend, he's not going to hold a grudge. Um, That's true. And the and other players aren't going to suddenly line up behind Townsend and have a go at Poch because they understand uh, Pochettino is a, a tough guy but a fair guy. And I think I think the team appreciate it. So in, in light of all of that, um, in light of the fact that he is a very good coach and somebody that players respect and, and, and so forth. Why, and this is a question from Nick Phil, why do you think it's taken so long um, for the fans to sing Poch's, Pochettino's Blue, Ar- Blue Army? Um, Aaron, you were there with me on Monday night and, and Thursday. Um, mm-hmm. they, there was a few renditions of mm-hmm. Pochettino's Blue Army, but it was, I didn't, <laughs> It wasn't being sung widely enough. No. Um, even when people tried to, to sing it, it was being drowned out with another song like Everywhere We Go or, or um, uh, Oh, and the Spurs, for example. Um, that that's I've long felt that. I don't I yeah. don't think we. I don't know whether it's just. Pochettino is a mouthful, and it's not very catchy in a song. Or that did across my mind as well. I'm... It, it wasn't sung at the Bill Nick today either, and I sort of expected it to be. But I'll tell you, I'm not really bothered by that. Um, uh, I think I think we've kind of transcended the idea of having one spectacular player or mm-hmm. one spectacular manager. I think in the post. Bale era in the post Redknapp era, I think uh, the team has has risen to the forefront much more than mm. a single person has. And personally, I think great. Don't sing, you know, don't sing Pochettino's name. Sing, sing about Harry Kane. Sing about Deli Ali. Sing, sing about you know the the team itself. Um, what can Pochettino do except? except bring forth the team. And um, if he does it quietly and, and, and we see it and, and he's not praised for it, I don't think he's, he bother, it bothers him at all. I think, I think that makes sense. Exactly. He, his ego doesn't need massaging. That's right. Um, and I, I, I think that maybe there's a, a communal sense of the fans that they realize that his ego doesn't need massaging, so they concentrate on encouraging the players, as you said. His his success, he's gone about it in a very un, unassuming way. He hasn't gone and he's not done a Brendan Rogers or a you know he's not a Harry Redknapp type person. He's he's just right. gone about quietly done his job, and and Aaron, that's a really good point about how post bail we're we're more of a team. Mm-hmm. But I'll, I'd also argue one step further that as a club. We've got a structure in place, you know, we've got, which is, I think, what Levy always wanted. We've got a director of football, or, or we've got, it's not director of football now, it's um, whatever, uh, is it Paul Mitchell? Yeah. Whatever, his, whatever his title is. Um, head, we've got, head, yeah, Sorry. Uh, head of recruitment, is it? So, or? Something, something like yeah, that, head yeah. of something like that. So, you know, we've got him doing his thing. We've got Pochettino, who's the head coach. We've got um, the players, and there isn't one big ego you know, with with Harry Redknapp, you always felt that there was a bit of a circus around him. Look, I, I liked Harry. Um, I didn't actually have any issues with him. Um, I quite enjoyed that time when he was manager. But there was a big circus around him. You know, he was very sort of media. I, I wouldn't even say media friendly, but just very. Um, he would he would play up to the media. And they liked him, and 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 he would do that thing for Sky Sports where he would roll up in his car and stick his head yeah. out the window yeah. and and then AVB was different in the sense that he uh, whilst I think he was a very d- decent person and quite dignified um, he would talk more than he needed to into the press but in a different way well, whilst Harry got on with the press AVB was always on the defensive and they didn't like him for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I just got that impression. And he, you always felt that AVB was very much on the defensive. Tim Sherwood was just a fucking clown. Okay, let's <laughs> let's not beat around the bush. Yeah. Okay, and you know he liked to talk things up. Pochettino, um, it was one of the girls on the pod said this last week. He uh, he says what he needs to say mm-hmm. in the press. He says the bare yeah. minimum, and that's it. 
Um, he he knows what his position is. That's coach of Tottenham Hotspur. He gets on with it. He he does what he needs to do. Um, even if you look at the interview this week uh, towards the end of the week over the um, incident with Townsend. He gave an interview, uh, uh, or he answered a question in a press conference, and he said something along the lines of, look, everybody saw what happened, or everybody knows what happened, because you've you've all reported it, and we've dealt with it, and, you know, he's been given a fine, and and, and so forth, and that's that. End of, period. Okay, no drama, nothing more. And that's it. And and I think that, that... yeah, maybe in time, if we if we start to progress up the table and start to win trophies, it's possible our fans might suddenly, some of them who haven't really, it hasn't fully dawned upon them, they might start to realise what a wonderful coach he is, and they might start to sing his song, sing his name a little bit more. But actually, it suits me down to the ground if he continues in, in the way that he does at the moment. Um, unassuming, and just gets on with it, and, and that's that. Uh, I mean, look at no ego. Look at Brendan Rodgers coming out and saying that he taught Balotelli how to defend corners, and putting himself in front of the team, and compare that to a guy like Mauricio Pochettino, who consistently puts the team ahead of himself when we succeed and when we fail. And I choose that every time. For him to have come out last week, I think it was, and sort of dug the team out for not performing up to up to standard. And then the, the fact that the team turned it around and played for him. If, if no one sings his song, that's, that's fine. That's fine. And I don't think he cares. I think he's, he's doing exactly what he should do, which is to bring the team ahead of himself, to support the team, support the club, make it about the young players that he's bringing in. And everybody knows where the, where the praise lies, whether or not they sing it or not. Absolutely. Okay. Final question. Um, I think it's a really good question, but, um, whether either one of us have got an answer, I don't know. Perhaps we should have discussed this off pod. Um, <laughs> Mark Stoll asks, what's the worst Tottenham-related gift you've received? Well, I'd, I've had hardly any Tottenham-related gifts. Um, the other year, I got a, a mug, which was for Father's Day. Uh, Ellie and his daughter bought it for me she had it made specially because you can't buy them over here um and it was fantastic i use it every morning for my cup of tea i've, I've never ha- i haven't had enough to have had a really bad Tottenham related gift anyway really i'm just grateful for anything that i get that's Tottenham related and, and also it's a bit of a contradiction in terms i mean there can't be you can't put worse than Tottenham in the same sense actually you can but, well. <laughs> uh, aaron is there anything that well, I can I can speak, um, you know, uh, actually and metaphorically. So actually, I've gotten two Tottenham related gifts, and both of them have been very very well meaning. Um, I I did get a, a Modric jersey the year that we sold him, but you know there was no way of predicting that, and and um, my wife doesn't know anything about about football, so you know I I I, I appreciate her. It's, Hemped. Metaphorically speaking, uh, the worst gift that we ever got, um, and this is uh, this is controversial, but I think it's Gareth Bale as a gift. I think that I think Gareth Bale taking us into the Champions League is the worst gift that we've got, if only because it allowed us to mistake our progress or our our our. Um, our situation for for our progress. In actuality, we've been slowly progressing. There was this blip of a season where we did so much better than we than we than we were expected to, and then after that, everybody was negative for three or four years. Uh, so, on a metaphoric level, that season is the worst gift I've ever been given. I've I've just thought of something that would be the worst gift if somebody gave it you. It would come from somebody who didn't really understand football. <laughs> That, um, that thought it would be a nice thing to get to buy somebody a half and half Spurs and Arsenal scarf. Ugh. Can you imagine that? Now, that is a contradiction in terms. Exactly. Um, <laughs> the worst, okay, so the worst, um, it suddenly occurred to me, so the worst Tottenham rated gifts I have. Um, as a member, every year um, you get, they send a gift pack out. Um, 
and the year before, sorry, last season, so last summer, summer of 2014, um, they, they give you a badge and they give you, um, uh, like, match, um, a sort of a re- re- review of the previous season and fixtures ahead and this, that and the other. But the, the, the sort of the main gift was some, um, some coasters, which um, I liked. I thought they were quite practical and... Um, some when I'm drinking tea or coffee or whatever and 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 yeah I, there was a practical purpose to them I quite like them and I know they were ridiculed by some people who had been members for longer than I had and and uh, apparently it was a uh, um it, the the gifts that they'd got in previous seasons were, were a lot better like typically the you'd, in seasons gone by you'd get a dvd with all the goals from from this, from, from from that season um but this year um I was hoping, you know, you know, they'll send me something a bit like some cost coasters, which which would be practical. But they just sent some postcards, which although they're quite pretty um, of the new stadium. There's one of the new stadium, um, or what it's going to look like, and there's one of one sort of cartoon like. I'm looking at it now. Um, it, it, it's like a cartoon type drawing depicting the old stadium or the old. Um, I think it's the West End. I can't see from here. Um, and a player kicking a ball. They're not any use to me, um, really. So I think the club should improve on there. Um, you pay about, I don't know, 45, 55 quid a year for, for membership. Um, and it's nice of them to send you gifts. But I've got to say that they, the club needs to get their finger out and and improve on, on the gifts. So the, wor- the worst related gift would be what they sent me this season, which is... Um, a postcard, and uh, I have no use for it. <laughs> send them to Greg. I'll send them to Greg. What a good idea! <laughs> I, I will. I'll, I'll write Greg a letter. That's a not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> um, that's not a bad idea. In fact, I've got um, because they messed up my membership this year, and they didn't send the the gifts when they should. They ended up sending it twice, so I've got two lots of um, postcards that I don't want. Send them to Greg and me. Yeah. <laughs> Do that. Right. On that note, um, Aaron, you're flying back tomorrow. Um, have a safe flight. Yep. Um, good, Thank good, you, sir. Good, good, good to see you this week. Um, I should add that uh, the next podcast, we'll, we'll record that two weeks Sunday. We've got the international break. I'm not, I'm not planning on doing anything next week. So the next one will be on Sunday, the whatever it is. 21st, 22nd of November, I think, um, after we play West Ham. Um, thank you, Greg. <coughs> thank you, Aaron. Um, thank you, Jeff. Br- future's bright, future's lily white. Good night. Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team, my dreams have ever seen. Put on that lily white and run on to that green. Seen his pain, it's at its low tonight. We fought our team through thick and thin and all those boring nights. And when the game is done, we'll sing a song and talk it out all night. Hey! Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team, my dreams have ever seen. To that green. Oh, we've seen them come, we've seen them go, the names up on our shirt. Gods have failed as men are hailed and faces in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out over her.